Consider the following three attitudes toward the decline and loss of capacity that has been and continues to be the human experience of aging. First, William F. May, in a passage where he is acknowledging the inevitability of decline, places our experience of it into what I think you might call a fairly traditional moral context. He writes, the appropriate question we face is not what are we going to do about it, but how does one rise to the occasion? Second, Sherwin Woolen, uh, also recognizing the inevitability and even circumspects the, uh, the goodness of the find, suggests in, in the passage uh, in which I'm going to read that continued efforts to increase the average lifespan should go on, but should go hand in hand with um, uh, just accepting our current maximum lifespan. He writes, I'm committed to the notion that both individual fulfillment and the ecological balance of life on this planet are best served by dying when our inherent biology decrees that we do. I'm equally committed to making that age as close to our biologically probable maximum of approximately 120 years as modern biomedicine can achieve. And then third, uh, Mike Trader arguing that we should become, in his terms, effective, we should strive to become effectively immortal. Uh, writes, it is a loathsome and cruel trick that nature takes such an exquis exquisitely wondrous creation of the human brain and imprisons it inside the weak, inefficient, fragile, and short-lived creature that is the human body. If, if being virtuous is at least part of what it means for us to flourish, then it's evident that any list or characterization of virtues will reflect beliefs about the sort of creature a human being is and the shape of the human life well lived what people call the furthest potentialities of our nature. And this will inevitably be both a descriptive and a normative take. So I want to investigate as best I can the kinds of research being pursued and proposed, both approaches that seek for the most part to enhance some of the capacities already in place, and approaches that seek a rather a radically new and extended form of life, but simultaneously, and especially with those more far-reaching attempts, I want to think from the start of the desirability of what it is that we uh, desire. So to take up the uh, challenge of anti-aging research uh, for understanding human virtue requires uh, some sort of attention to those general issues, and that's part of what I have to do. That's one of the level at which thought is needed. At least as significant, though, may be a somewhat less abstract one that we can think about some particular traits of character in order to see whether they might cause us to question attempts to extend the maximum lifespan, or alternatively, whether those traits can be rethought in ways that complement or support the efforts to retard the aging process. But the question then for me, for my project, is how that biological fact, if it is one, relates to our, our experience. If and as we retard aging, must the experience of generativity that welcoming to the next generation become less meaningful and significant? Uh, if the lifespan stretches out indefinitely for us, might we have less reason to invest our time and energy in the next generation? The project that I have in mind has the following shape. Uh, trying to give due regard to skepticism about the possibility of the more far-reaching proposals for age retardation, I also want to try to take their aims and their uh, what they only be dreams at the moment seriously. Uh, to do that means more than thinking about possible harms and benefits. It means thinking from the outset about the vision of what's good for the beings that is embedded in these proposals. And after all, at least some of that research tends to view what is for us the normal human condition, temporal and body finite, as a problem to be overcome, raising their lives rather fundamental questions about the human uh, flourish. Alongside and in conjunction with that general question, I will also examine certain probably desirable uh, traits of character, such as those I named, uh, considering their implications for how we ought to think about engaging research and considering the implications of that research for how we ought to think about that. Uh, out of this will come, I hope, a set of essays that cast some light on desires and aspirations that are not simply scientific or simply humanistic, but that are human projects. And we have several things that we can 